Hello and welcome to Time with Dr. Harris. I'm so glad that you decided to come and spend time with me again. In the recent videos that you've seen, you noticed that I talked about that we were going to be dealing with relationships. And you know, I talked about how strong I felt about the family being the first relationship that we need to deal with. And so we were so thankful that we were able to do some couples who we knew or people that we knew have grown in their journey. But one of the things I talked about in my promo with the new series I'm doing on toxic relationships, I talked about we're dealing with codependency, dysfunctional families, and family violence. You know, the thing that's so interesting about all of this is all is really connected. Uh, we're going to start with codependency, but what I continue to keep learning about codependency is that we don't even realize that we're in codependent relationships. And I'm, I did a PowerPoint that I want you to look at, and I actually want you to take notes. Because I want you to look at it and say, am I in a codependent relationship? Because a lot of times we don't really know. And so I, I, that, that's the previous one. Now we, I want to introduce my guest, who is Simone Calloway. Now here, this young lady was doing a college paper, and it hit her that about codependency. And I'm just so thankful as I continue to watch her grow and move that she would be honored and privileged that she would be here. And I want us to be able to talk real talk about codependency relationship. I need for you to understand how important this message is. And like I said, if you haven't seen the, mess, the video before this, I want you to go back to the PowerPoint because I really want you to look at it and say, based on this information that she did, am I in a codependent relationship, okay? So now I want to introduce you to my guest, Simone Calloway. How are you doing, Simone? I'm doing great. I am just so glad that you are here. I appreciate that you come and spend this time with me and that you would allow yourself to be able to um, reach other people for their lives to be changed. Because both are supposed to be both of being counselors. We know how important that is. And the first thing we always talk about is counseling ourselves first mm -hmm. and what we're going through, you know. And um, would you agree that many people don't know that they're in cold yes. dependent relationships? Yes, I would agree. How did it hit you when you realized that you were? Hmm. I honestly think I was in a class when we were talking about codependent relationships. Okay. And I just had like that moment of this is me, and yeah. this is my the relationship yes. that I was in at the yes. time. It was literally everything that described wow. my relationship. Wow! And I just had a moment where yes. I had to kind of sit in that. Why did you feel when you realized that? I think I it was like, wow, a high, high moment. Yeah. Of like now I can put a name to it. Okay. So okay. I think I okay. That's good. good in that's that good. Sense. That's good. Um, but it was now okay, it's time to make a decision. Mm. Now that we know what this is, right. are we going to stay here right. or are we going to do something about right. it? Is there anything in your journey of life that you know seen before now that you're able to recognize it that, whether it was in your family, your family line, or things that you've seen in your family, that you would recognize that, I've been dealing with this for a while, or my family mm -hmm. deals with this. Um, I think as it relates to me and like the codependent relationships I've been in have kind of like, I think stemmed from the relationship with my father. Okay. okay. Um, so like my own daddy issues. Right. Um, lack of self-worth. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Being a people pleaser. Um, and then the relationship with my mom, I think she's love her to death, but just a passive communicator right, right and I kind of took that on not being able to express my feelings um or knowing how without feeling like oh I don't want to be rejected or yes I don't want to hurt someone else's feelings mm -hmm. so I'll just you know I'll just take it on the chin and I won't say anything but then I would find myself becoming very explosive okay after okay. I've taken all I can take yes and 
that's not a good way to communicate either. Right. But I think those are the two roots of like how I kind of entered certain relationships that weren't healthy for me. With the situation with your father, do you feel like you were always looking? You know, at, at we we need our fathers and mm-hmm. we need their love. Do you feel like you always was kind of looking for it somewhere? Always, always. So, um, always looking. Definitely a void that wasn't filled. Yes. Um, so, just background on our relationship. My biological father was there for me up until I was in middle school, mm-hmm. so 12 years old. Mm-hmm. And not just there, he was daddy number one. Wow. And we looked just alike. He would like, you know, we did things all the time, summer vacations, and then it just abruptly stopped. Mm. So my first question with that relationship was, why doesn't he love me? Yes. Or why am I no longer lovable? Yes. And then I think two years later or a year later, he ended up having another child, which he started doing everything mm. for him that he once did for me. Yes. So I really began to feel like this is... It's something to do with me. Mm-hmm. It's a reason why he doesn't love me anymore or, you know, why he's not, you know, putting time into our relationship anymore. So I internalize that a lot. Um, I'm sure. So, of course, I'm looking for other relationships now in my life, friendships, family relationships, and intimate relationships to fill this void with him. But now I'm, like, losing myself in those relationships. Yes. Trying to fill that void that he left. Was the ever so the English relationship really satisfy it or pieces of it or how'd that go? No, no, no. But I mean, I think you know temporarily they do okay, temporary. at times. Okay, okay. Until and I call them good yeah. self inflicted pain. Mm. Um, so you grow to learn that you know. A habit is a habit. You know, addiction is addiction. I can be addicted to this and get off that, and then I pick up something else. So it's like I went from one relationship to the next, yes. trying to fill a void that that it was all temporary, just instant gratification for that moment. But did that make? Didn't that make you feel sad? Yeah. Did it make you still feel like it must be me? It did. So, which is why I call it self-inflicted. <laughs> it's just I'm inflicting more pain right. as I go because I'm not dealing with the root issue yes. of what it really was. Yes. So, there's supposed to be 10 signs of a codependency that we're going to deal with. I'm going to ask her these questions, okay? Simone, will you ever have trouble articulating your emotions and feelings? Mm-hmm. Can you expand on that, please? Yeah. So, um... Growing up, it was just me and my mom in the household. My brother was 11 years older than me, so far in age. Most of the time, I only remember it being me and my mom. Mm -hmm. And because she was more passive in the way she communicated, I would think um, I struggled with articulating how I felt to other people. Um, I think also at other times, I would communicate, and then I would be shut down. So it it made me feel like my feelings weren't valid. Yes. Or, um, you know, people just didn't want to hear them. Mm-hmm. So eventually I kind of went silent. And like I said before, I would just take things, you know, until I just couldn't take it anymore. And then it would just be very explosive. Wow. So, I mean, that became a toxic relationship exactly. at that point. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you talked earlier about realizing you want a piece. Can you expand on that? Mm-hmm. Um, so like when my dad leaving, I had this, you know, why don't you want to love me anymore? So I think I enter every relationship with like needing to feel validated, mm-hmm. needed to feel loved or accepted. So I'm, I'm genuinely and naturally a helper and a giver. Yes. Um, so I, I want to see people do well. I want to give and help out where I can. But the issue was the expectation. Okay. The expectation was in return, you validate my feelings okay. and you make me feel loved right. and accepted and appreciated. Yes. And when that doesn't happen, then that's a problem. But didn't it make you go more into what you were trying to get and not getting it? Didn't it make you go more into what is wrong with me? It does. So it's like this 
vicious cycle, which codependency yes. is. Yes. Is that wanting to be needed or dependent on other people to fulfill your needs and in return still needing them. So it's like almost always wow. yes. on this same cycle over and over. Right. And did you also feel the need to fix others? Yeah, and I probably wouldn't have just outright said that, like, oh, right. I'm trying to fix right, them. Right, right. But, I mean, being someone who was codependent, I think you attract other mm -hmm. people that are codependent. Yes. So, um, I was attracting people that were broken mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. were in, had their own things going on, but instead I would be so consumed in all of their problems right. in their life. right and try to fix what's going on or always offering solution or becoming the solution. Right. And how can I make your life better? How can I help with this? Yes. How can I lighten your load? Mm -hmm. But it can be exhausting mm -hmm. because I'm no longer working on me. Right. No personal development, right. no growth. Yes. It's all fixated on mm -hmm. the, my partner or this other person. Right. So it just becomes exhausting and I kind of be, become resentful. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you struggle to set clear boundaries in your life? Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like the boundaries are always being pushed. Mm -hmm. And every single time something would happen, it's like, okay, well, either justifying it or making some type of excuse so I can, you know, push the boundary a little bit more. And you don't know that that's what's happening. Okay. It's like how I signed this 2020, of mm -hmm. course. But when you look back at situations, it's just like, you know, we always say to our girlfriends, I would never tolerate that. Right. And then when it happens to you, it's just like, okay, but mm -hmm. this is why it happened. Mm -hmm. Then when mm -hmm. something else happens, you know, and it just is no boundaries at all. At all. Wow. And did you sacrifice your own wants and needs to appease others? Yeah. <laughs> so you so was neglecting yourself. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to say. Just clearly neglecting myself. Because I became so consumed in my partners or my friends, family members, stuff is no longer about me anymore. Right. right. It's all about making somebody else happy or helping them or find a solution or what can I do for you? But never, okay, I can't pour from an empty cup. It's just give, 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 yes. give, give. Yes. And I'm depleted yes. with nothing left. I'm exhausted. Wow. And it's really not helpful for anybody. Right, right. <laughs> were you able, do you feel like you were loyal to a fault? Yeah, definitely loyal to a fault. Because when, when it comes to like lack of boundaries, um, I struggle with understanding I could forgive you, but I could still set a boundary with you. Okay. So I would just forgive people for doing, you know, certain things. And then... I'll enter right back into that relationship without setting up another boundary mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. or having a, a true conversation about what happened Yes, and just say, oh, I forgive you and just try to move on like nothing happened and the same thing would keep on happening. Wow. So did they ever recognize what they were doing? I've had some people that have come back later and was like, you know, I was going through something at the time, or I realized this about myself okay. years okay. later. But no, right? Sometimes. Wow, <laughs> I appreciate you sharing with us. Mm -hmm. Did you ignore and deny conflict and other problems? Ignore or deny conflict? I think I've definitely downplayed situations. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think I've. I'm a good communicator, of course, now. But even then, I was I was still name problems, but I don't think we would really deal with mm. them to the degree that they yes. need to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just kind of downplay things or just find some justification or some understanding in my head. Um, so really so I can push that boundary again yes. and justify why the yes. relationship is okay. Right, that's okay. Yeah. So all during, all during all this time, I think earlier you talked about low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Can you respond on that? Yeah, so I think that's interesting. Um, even when I think about the, the most challenging relationships or even codependent relationships I've been in, I probably would never say I had low self-esteem. Okay. 
ever. Okay. Because I've always been really confident in my abilities right. and my work ethic, what I have to offer, my gifts. But that relationship piece, I've just always had problems in that area. And I really think the root of that issue was the relationship with my father. Right. And I never addressed that. You know, being a 12-year-old girl, mm -hmm. teenager, early teenager, I didn't know how to communicate right. what I was feeling at yes. the time. So once I really started to do, like, healing work and trying to get down to the root issues, a lot of that stems from that relationship and how it ends so abruptly. So because it just ended, like, just one day, it just stopped. Mm -hmm. I then start to look to other relationships and people to validate me. Yes. My love language is love, words of affirmation. Yes. I, I like to be affirmed in that mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. um, because I don't think I've always had that. But again, I'm looking to my loved ones and people's closest to me mm -hmm. for their opinions mm -hmm. of me to like determine oh how I feel about myself. Yeah. So now it's like I recognize that, yeah, while words of affirmation is great to be affirmed by people that you love, that can be how I only, the you know, what I used to define my own worth or how I feel about myself. So we, we talk about it being in the family and you see your own friends too and your mm -hmm. job, co-workers. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that that codependency was going to different areas of your life? Too? Yeah, definitely. So... Family relationships, probably not as much just because, um, let's talk about that's, why, yeah. because I was going to think about that. Let okay. Um, I don't know. I'm just not really that close to my family. Okay. My so mind, yeah. 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 I had to yeah. think about that. So with you not being close to your family, you probably make other people family. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, what you expect out of a family? You expect them out of these friends or whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So how about how about coworkers? I would say definitely friends. Okay. And you still saw that you continually still had that codependency mm -hmm. attitude. And did anybody anybody ever address that with you, of, of you being so kind and somebody taking advantage of you or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I've had definitely had friends say, you know, um, you're too nice. You need to learn how to speak up for yourself. Um, you need to learn to say no. And unapologetically so say no. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and not give so much out to people that don't you know, reciprocate. Did you understand what they were saying to you? Yeah. Did you appreciate that? or did No, you like, for sure. Absolutely. But it didn't hit you. But it didn't hit me like that. Right. Because there right. were things I just needed to go through yes. and experience. So I can see it for myself and really mm -hmm. understand it. Because like I said, I'm a giver naturally. Right. And as a giver, I mean, the goal is not to receive something in return. Yes. It's not. You know, um, there's so much learning that's taking place right now. Mm -hmm. And you being so honest is going to help so many people. And I really want you to know how much I appreciate you sharing. Mm -hmm. And I also want to ask you, did you feel responsible for the feelings and actions of others? Yeah, there were times I did. Um, so at times where I did try to like find my voice and express my feelings or emotions about something um, and that would upset my partner or they, you know, get mad or, you know, this was the wrong day to bring this up. You know, I got a lot going on. Mm. Then it's like, oh, well, I feel responsible. Well, if you would have chosen a better time to talk yes. about this. Yes. Or if you would have said it this way instead of that. Right. Well, if you would have been so accusatory and use I statements, I feel this way because, you know, so you start to take on um, the responsibility of whatever took place in that conversation. But... I had to under, also understand I was dealing with somebody else who probably emotionally immature at the time and unable to communicate their feelings effectively. So it wasn't going to be a productive conversation anyway. Do you see it now as a, a, a form of abuse? No, for sure. Emotional abuse. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, it yes. all this goes hand in yes. hand. Yes. Codependent co relationships, toxic relationships. Um, it's just abuse. Yes. Physical, mental, yes. emotional, yes. it all goes hand in hand, which is why codependent relationships are so dangerous.
because there are so many things that you just don't see in the moment of being in the moment. Mm, mm. So how would you even recognize a healthy relationship? You won't unless you actively are seeking something different. Like I said, it wasn't until I was in a class learning about codependent relationships where I had this like aha moment of this is what I'm in mm-hmm. and experiencing mm-hmm. and then reading all these traits about codependent people and it was just like this is me. That yes. was a hard pill to swallow right. but after that I was very intentional about working on me. So I just, I mean I don't know. So since you've been working on you mm-hmm. how's it been? It's been great. <laughs> And, 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 you know, the last question was you refuse to seek help because you don't feel like the problem is that bad. But when you recognized, Mm -hmm. tell me, let's go to that journey. That was still a journey in itself. It wasn't like, oh, I'm I'm codependent on this person. Okay. So I'm making a conscious decision to not be, and it's just going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. No, even after that, I had other failed relationships okay. that I can see that I went into those relationships with the same traits. Um, but even after that, it's just like, it's a process. I had to just be honest with myself okay. after a while. Okay. And sometimes people okay. will say the same things about you. Okay. You know, the first time somebody say it, it's easy to dismiss it. Mm-hmm. The second time it's like, okay, somebody said that before, but whatever. But the third and fourth time, it's like you really have to sit back and reflect. You know, I think, I like to say I'm this way in a relationship, but this is how I keep being perceived by multiple people. Okay. So is this true? Mm. It has to be some type of truth to it since multiple people said it. So it wasn't an overnight change. Again, I had to unlearn a lot of behaviors. I also had to see things for myself, like, oh, well, this is what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm three relationships Mm -hmm. now, but now I see it. Mm -hmm. So I had to really make some connections, but definitely be honest about my, to myself about things that people said about me or just things that I've seen for myself. Like when, like I told you, I wouldn't um, address things at first, Mm -hmm. but I would let things go on and on and on and on until I expose. I've been physically abusive to partners before. Okay. Okay. But, I don't want to be like that. Yes. That's not who I am. Yes. That's not who I want to be or how I want to be perceived. But I had to sit with myself and reflect, why did you become physical? Mm-hmm. Because That's I didn't good. say That's anything good. for so long. Mm-hmm. I was passive. Mm-hmm. And then when I did try to say something, that wasn't good enough. So right. I took the blame for that. And then when I tried to say something again, that wasn't respected. So now I'm angry and I'm bitter and I'm resentful mm-hmm. and I feel rejected and yes. I feel all these ways. Yes. So I'm on attack mode at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I made a conscious decision that I wasn't going to give people that kind of power over me to make me want to get physical and get out of character. Either. Yes, that's what I was going to talk yeah. about. You, there's this person over here that you feel that you are, mm-hmm. but you're acting out of character. Mm-hmm. And how did you feel? When you continue to keep acting out of character. I didn't like it. And it felt like an outer body experience. For sure. Yes. Because, I mean, it's just been some times where I've been in some situations and I'm just like, who was that? Mm -hmm. To the point where, (laughs) horrible. I end up naming, you know, like we like alter egos. Mm -hmm. We can say that person did it. Right, right, right. right. So, you know, you create this alter ego and it's just like, that's the Hulk. That's what we call mm-hmm. it. But it was like, that wasn't Simone. That was the Hulk. But whatever you did, you deserved it because the Hulk doesn't come out right. unless mm-hmm. you provoke her. Yes. So, I mean, also trying to justify my immaturity yes. too and lack of growth. Um, so, I mean, I just made a decision that just that just is not who I want to be or how I want to be perceived at all. But you were that way for a while. For a long time. So. Because I don't think I knew anything different. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And until that class, you didn't recognize how yeah. it was to that extent. And so, in the journey of trying to renew your life, mm-hmm. find who you really are or walk in who you really are, did you lose friends? Um, yes, I can definitely say I, yeah, 
lost friends. Did you friends? lose friends or you made a decision yeah. to let some people go? Right, there we go. There okay, we go. That's, what, that's what I was like. That's what, yeah, I mean, okay. we just, and they're tough decisions. Yes. Because, I, I mean, that's I've cool. had friendships that I can say, oh, I've been friends with somebody since the kindergarten mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or since elementary or middle school, yes. high school. I, I'm grateful that I do have, like, some long-standing relationships. But just because the relationship is, you know, the duration has been long, was it a healthy relationship? Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's a lot that's of times right. why people get stuck in relationships with their partners. Yes. Because we've been together for 10 years. Right. Yeah, 10 toxic years. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, right. So, um, yes, I, I've lost friends or just we're still, I would say friends, but how we deal with each other looks a little different. Mm -hmm. Um and that's just more so, you know, if people are not growing or healthy or in healthy relationships themselves, they can't really give you good advice sure. or, you know, help you with your situation. So it's just I want people around me that's, you know, working on themselves in health, healthy personal development um, so we can grow together. Because if we're not growing together, it's just. But have you found it hard to find people who are really working on themselves like that? It is, yes. But in this season of my life, I've really been praying for God to reveal to okay. me the people in my okay. life. Um, That's good. Who are good for me for this season or for life. Um, I just don't have time for distractions right now. So yeah. I'm not interested in, you know, entertaining things that just are not serving me. And don't you think it's interesting that who we're talking about and what we're talking about is strong in the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. So there are many people who are dealing with this mm -hmm. in the in the church and um, there needs to be some serious healing. That's why we're trying to get real on this mm -hmm. show. It's because we can't because I care about you and I really mm -hmm. want you to be healthy. Mm -hmm. My passion is that you be made whole. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we're going to be dealing with different things and, and um, it's just so amazing how we, as the body of Christ, don't want to deal with the stuff that needs to be dealt with. Christ said, come that you may have life in there abundantly, and we're full of toxic, and we don't know, we don't even realize it, and it's in, it's in the church world, and God's not pleased. Mm -hmm. God's not pleased. So um, I'm okay if this is hard for you or you want to get upset or whatever. My thing is that you become whole and heal and be able to have the abundant life that Christ died for you. And um, one of the things that I want um, Simone to talk about is the fact that she's in her journey now mm -hmm. of newness. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? It feels amazing. Um, I'm just grateful for, you know, his love. Because once you understand who you belong to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all that other stuff is like, it doesn't matter. Yes. Um, I went so long feeling like, oh, I'm unlovable. You know, my dad abandoned me. I have a good father. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. I am loved, you know. And valued. I'm valued. I don't know. It's just, it's amazing. Um, and I want that for other people. Yes. Too. Yes. Um, I have a helper. Yes. When I'm in trouble, I have a friend. Yes. So when I need encouragement mm -hmm. or when I need advice mm -hmm. or, you know, some guidance on what to do, he's always there. Yes. So I no longer feel this, this urge or a tug to please people mm -hmm. or to be worried about, you know, what pe other people think about me. Um, or this, I need to feel accepted. I don't feel that. I, you know, he's delivered me from that. Yes. I'll say that, say it that God. way. Praise God. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful for his love. You know, right um, I'm just so proud of you because do your time of journey when you could have really, there are times you step back, but when you could have just really quit. Are there ever times before I talk about that? Are there any times where you want you felt like I don't want to live? Or I just don't what did you ever feel at a point in your life in all of this that I don't really want to deal with this anymore? Mm -hmm. 
No, honestly, I've always felt um, like a tug or a call from God. Mm. And since I was really young, actually, um, the ministry that I want to do, God gave it to me when I was 12. Yes. So I've never had that mindset because I know for a fact my life and the things that I've been through are going to touch so many others. Yes. So I've never, thank God, never yes. had that sense of hopelessness. Yeah. 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 What a blessing. Mm -hmm. And even now, you're going to be helping many people. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that those of you who are listening are really taking this in. Even if it's hard at first, come back mm -hmm. and listen again. And then those of you who believe in God, go before him and ask him to help you. Because, you know, he wants you to have the greatest life, the greatest mm -hmm. experience in relationships. That is God's plan. He's a relational God. Mm -hmm. And he wants to have this with you. And and I told you earlier that I did not have a father, but he's been my father. Mm -hmm. So I know that you can be loved and appreciated by our Heavenly Father. And I want you to know that um, God loves you. We're going to continue in this, in time with Dr. Harris, to be able to encourage you, to be able to give you knowledge and understanding, to be able to lift you up, and for you to be able to be whole and healed. And I'm hoping that you will not run to the point where you don't take this in, but that you will confront this with yourself, with yourself, confront this with yourself and decide that I really want to, things to be better and I do want this awesome relationship that God wants us mm -hmm. to have. And so, you know, my motto is you're more awesome than you think you are. Mm -hmm. And I want you to remember that and think about that but you're going to have to walk it out to be who God has made you to be. And so I look forward to um, your life being changed. I look forward to testimonies. I look forward to um, continual growing and learning. I want you to, if you didn't see the PowerPoint, I want you to go back. I want you to look at it. Take notes if you have to. Identify if Am I dealing with some of these things? And then also Simone gave me some great things to think about. You have somebody who here has been through it and now who has um, was walking it out and how God is blessing her, her life becoming renewed. And I know it is, and I'm just so thankful. So we want to thank you and praise you, God, for Simone's testimony and all the great and wonderful things that you're doing in her life, Lord. And we thank how many lives are going to be touched and healed from this testimony, and we ask you to continue to stay with people, that you will touch their heart and their mind, and that their lives will be changed. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.